What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds and welcome to part 3 of this Victorian house tutorial. So I promised last time we'll do the garden and the driveway but also we'll do a lovely little orangery so we're going to crack on with that in a bit. First of all I want to say this is going to be more of a guide than a tutorial in the sense of I'm going to show you guys how to build the garden but it's all based around local constraints and where and how you've built your house. But the actual orangery bit is going to be a proper tutorial so don't worry about that. Now on screen you'll be able to see a materials list. What I've done is I've included all the blocks you're going to need for the orangery but in there I've also added the blocks I've used for the garden walls and the bushes. Now this is just an overview so you guys get an understanding of how much I've used and it gives you a little bit to uh, build off yourself so you can see I've got this nice brick wall here in front of me. So without further ado let's jump on into the video and show you guys how I built it. Okay so now it's time for us to get on with the landscaping section of this build and I've got to say I've got some nice interesting things planned for us. This is probably going to be quite a time lapse heavy part of this video so instead of it being a 100% tutorial this is going to be more of a guide on how to build gardens like I do. So first things first is the road out the front. So this building needs to be connected to a road um, because it is a townhouse as such so it needs a way of getting in and out and what I've done is I've just built a small little road here. This is just stone and andesite and I've built it probably about seven blocks across like that six wide this one uh, and then next to that we've got a four block wide pavement so it's one block up for the curb and then another block up for the actual pavement you can do it all slabs recently I've started doing them all slabs but I thought I might as well carry on this whole road with how I've got going on here so our attention turns to the building itself you may notice I have it actually raised again on another platform above this section of the ground now that wasn't intentional and again it's just a situational sort of constraint we have now. So what I'm going to do is come over here uh, using world edit. You guys obviously do what you've got to do with your stuff. We are just going to remove that lower level and come around the bottom here and add in a selection of polished andesite. So what I've done there is I've just changed the state of those blocks down there so they now become polished andesite which is a 1 colon 6 in terms of world edit and I think that looks okay still we've got a nice bit of grandeur underneath there and those andesite walls help make that pop I uh, will do the same around this section here and we'll obviously we'll do the same over here as well now the video in, in its sense is we are going to be so we will get around to the garden section later on in this video and that will include all of the bits of building the orangery, which is a small little conservatory on the back of the house. But we will only build it on one side. Uh, and I'll explain why. Um, because it's kind of just nice to have a little bit of differences between buildings. So both buildings weren't probably built at the same um, grandeur. They probably didn't have the same stuff involved with both of them. So, you know, it's quite nice to have a little bit of differences between the two. So while I'm rambling on there, what I'm going to do here is actually bring out a piece of this, put that across like so. Now this will form a sort of barrier between the upper and lower levels. So when we come around to here, we're going to have ourselves knock out those two blocks like so. Bring on down like that. We can also change that out for another block. Stone brick slabs for this because it breaks up the texture a little bit. Or you can have it one block lower and not worry about that. It's entirely up to you. But what's going to happen here is we come up into this small little terrace. We can fill that up. You don't have to use the slabs like I am. It's just my ease of doing that. And then this opens you up into the driveway that goes along the side of the house. So we've got a nice little thing going here and it's looking a bit more built in to the landscape. Um, again, what I like to say with landscapes is they're very, very situational. Uh, and not just situational, they're also very personal. So you do you in this sense that's kind of how i like to run these tutorials they are not me exclaiming exactly how to build things um which i think some of you don't like you you prefer it if i was to be a bit more forceful with what we want to do but ultimately the idea is you guys are building you build it how you wish to build it in the sense of how things work for you so what i'm looking for in here is actually this block i've got in my hand so we're going to put in a little fence line in the back here so we've got this little bit here, um, we need to count across six blocks from the edge of the house to the edge of the boundary. So six blocks there and that's going to form our edge wall. So this runs all the way down to the front of the house, doesn't really matter how long it is. Um, I will obviously say now that the materials used in this are an estimate at the beginning of the video. Uh, you may use less, you may use more, um, that is a warning for anyone building this in survival. All of this is going to, you know, it's very fluctuating. I haven't planned any of this out in particular. We are just going to be building. And the amount of materials you use 
again up to you you don't have to do everything exactly the same okay so that brings us down to here uh, what we're going to do is actually emit all of this section here because i've got a bit of a a bit of a bend in this road so when we get to this bit here you're going to place the bottom of the columns that sit around the edge of the gate so the gate is going to be five blocks wide made out of iron iron fences on the outside of the gate we're going to have columns of jungle wood like that and i think that just breaks up this brick motif we've got going on here you don't have to use it and again you can do what you want we don't have to build it up three high um, but this little bit of granite around the bottom as well is quite nice to have so place that all the way around the facing edge and then you can also do the same on this corner if you wish and that just breaks all up a little bit what we can do as well is grab out some polished granite slabs place these across the top and hey presto you got yourself a nice little wall going on there which breaks up the white of the building itself with this nice pinker color at the front here so what we're going to do here is place in the sort of um i guess it's like a lip like a threshold uh, and that's five blocks across and that's going to be our fence line uh, sorry our gate and then from the gate we carry on this way now i haven't explained this exactly what we're going to be doing yet but what we're going to be building is a semi-circle drive that goes and connects both of these houses in together uh, in this time period that is very common because people would be driven in dropped off they would walk to their houses and then the carriage would leave and go off around the back to park up in one of the muses the stable houses whatnot especially for a house of this size so you wouldn't tend to leave carriages out the front um you know you do you with it again but if you want a little parking lot that's fine but for us we're going to have it as being a driveway in the literal sense as you drive in and then you drive away so i'm going to carry this all the way across the front like this and build the same up this side so we're probably going to do a quick little time lapse while i get this whole fence line in for these builds and then we can jump back and we can figure out what to do with this little driveway okay so you can see the wall is in now around the whole property at the front uh, what you can see also is this plot is quite lopsided we've got a lot more space on the left hand side than we do on the right uh, and this is just down to local constraints and i urge you when you are building this to actually add some local constraints another building next to it a park something that gives this build a bit more of a natural feel as to why it's in that area so what we're going to move on to now is building the actual driveway section but first of all we need to add a little garden that sits in this middle bit here uh, so what we're going to do for that is get out some stone brick slabs or just some stone slabs that i have in my hand here and build this up by six blocks so that should be six blocks long then we need to go in by one across by one two another two and then one and then finish this up all the way across so that gives us a nice little driveway in the center also gives us a nice little area here to actually put a nice flower bed in or something where I've got this wall doing some strange things like so what you want to do is actually angle this as well so give it a little bit more of a diagonal that way and then just carry us on down here so when we get back to this fence gate over here we need to go up by six I didn't count them but that should be six then it's one and then it's one two so because of the um, because of the angle we've got here we're going to count that one two three four instead of six because we've got a couple of block difference in size and again this is all based just on our local constraints here so come up by one go across by two knock this back go across by another two and then you've got yourself the little semicircle in the center there uh, i know it has a little bit different height and difference but i think to be honest that looks good and it's going to keep our drive looking nice as well so the next point now is to actually get in here and get our spade out and start shoveling away at stuff so all of this needs to be turned into the grass path uh, you can now text the grass path if you wish by adding a few little bits and bobs into it also the areas underneath the stones like this that sort of affect the grass path you can either come back through and add maybe a little lip as well of that so it doesn't cut in straight away to the building um, or you can just build it straight up to it and put a block underneath there what i'm going to do is go around and add that in but what I'm also going to do is probably jump to a little time lapse now of me covering this whole area in grass path using the spade because I want to give you guys a nice understanding of how long it would take. Um, but yeah, let's jump into that quickly.
So, the grass path is now in and it looks really quite like a driveway that's been covered in gravel or some sort of stone. You can see I've left the corners with a little bit of um, space to breathe. So in here, what you want to do is build yourself a nice hedge. I would say probably too thick. It's quite um, it's quite dense around here. So what I'm doing is just hand placing this in. You obviously can use world edit. And you can see here, I've actually left this wall one block lower than the, um, the rest of it should be. So we can build that up. Um, but this hedge line will carry on across the whole of this fence all the way down through there. And I, I feel that hedges just help bring a build to life. Once you start putting a hedge, a fence, and just some bushes in, it really, really does give you what you want to do. So this carries on all the way up to the edge here. Um, and then we can go back through and you just knock some out, put a bit of peppering of a different colour in there. So it looks like it's got a bit, maybe a bit of ivy growing within it or anything like that. We're going to do this on both sides. So we're probably just copying and pasting it over to the other side. Uh, you guys can obviously do it however you wish, but I do like just building bushes because once you get some different coloration in there and also the size and the height and maybe even a bit of depth in there, it can really start to bring a build together like so. What you can do is run along, place down some grass or, you know, get out some. So what you can do is add a little bit of extra detail in there with some grass, some little flowers, and that just helps break up this boundary here. Um, and now it's time to actually get on to this middle section of this garden, which will start looking quite nice. We've already got quite a nice formal feel to this place. So my ideas for this area is to build a couple of little trees made out of oak fences here. So I'm not the best at building little sort of trees like this, but the idea is you sort of get yourself a skeleton with some fences. You then start covering it with leaves until you get your sort of desired effect. So, you know, these trees do look small. They do look un minecraft tree like but i think with the nice and the correct amount of covering you can really get something looking quite pretty uh, you can obviously throw in a little bit of extra depth there a little bit of extra color if you need to maybe throw a bit of, a bit of spruce leaves in there but hey that doesn't look doesn't look too bad the idea with these is you kind of don't want them to look too square any minecraft tree you don't want to look too square uh, i'm not one to build custom trees very much uh, a lot of my custom trees have been pre-made i just sort of bring in with a schematic um, that is no lie. I never try and cover that up. I never say I build my trees. So the idea is that, yeah, you have a little go like that, or if you're feeling lucky, you can just grow yourself a big tree and then have at it. Like we've got over here, you can see I've got some big trees just lining the grounds. We can also do that here as well. So we may do that in that corner over there just to give it a little bit more depth, but again, go on around, get some bone meal out, pepper this place with life, give it a nice little feel to it. There we go. Obviously, take down the tall grass because it always looks a bit much. Get some flowers in here. But what's also quite nice to do is to get a piece of coarse dirt and just run around, you know, put a bit of coarse dirt in, in and around. Gives it a little bit of extra detail. Breaks up the grass a bit. You don't want too much green with this sort of stuff. I know greenery is nice, but having too much greenery really does open it up to being a little bit too stale. So that's what we're kind of looking at for this little front garden bit. You can also then run a hedge line along the back here as well, which then sticks above this slab. So you've got yourself a nice little bit of a border when you look at it from out here. Yeah, looks nice. Do you know what? I would not mind living in this house. Um, these ones that I've got in my world of uh, Wolverhampton sit so nicely overlooking a canal dock and basin. And, and honestly, I think I would live there in real life if I could. So what I'm going to do now is quickly jump to another little time lapse and be filling this all up, show you guys how it looks at the end and also this area over here and then we can start moving on to the back of the house. So let's go. Okay so we're back at the front of the house here and you can see how it's looking quite dapper now with the greenery around the front. I've managed to get myself a large tree in here, gone around and just peppered a few little leaves around the top, put a bit of a base around it, gave this area a bit more detail. We're not going to have a hedge all the way up this one. This is going to be a normal stone, uh, normal brick wall there. Um, but what I have done is gone around and added the fence in. So we've got one, two, three, four, five across the front, and that goes up three. And then we've got three at the top here to give it a bit more of a sort of curved shape at the top, a little archway at the top. And it's the same over here. So yeah, that's how the front garden needs to look. I think it looks all right. 
It's a nice little um, feature and it just helps bring this build together a bit more. Now it's time to jump on round to the back. I think what we're going to do is carry on the back from this way. So we're going to get our path in here. So what you want to do first is just carry on this little fence line across here using these upside down stairs. We kind of forgot to add that in beforehand. So just put that in like so. One more there. And we're building that across with some polished andesite on top. You've got yourself a little walkway through there. So around the back here, you want to probably get out your grass path as well. And we're going to carry this on all the way back past the house. What you're going to do is you're going to leave a gap next to the house by one and a gap next to this wall by one because this hedge carries on all the way down this side, all the way into the garden. Uh, and that's just just a nice little feature. helps bring a bit more colour into this place. The reason you don't want to do it up against the wall here is just because it looks a bit nicer having a little gap between here. And then you can put some a bit of greenery down here, a bit of foliage again. Helps break up that grass feel, helps break it all up a bit more. So we get us down to the back and then we can start on that orangery. Okay, so we're around the back of the house now. It's time to get started on this orangery, like I said. So what we've got to do is break out a lot of stuff we did last time because obviously this is just here if you didn't want to build the orangery on this side at all. What happens now is this pathway becomes like so and it moves over by once. It's only two blocks wide. This then builds up a little bit more, so you've got a bit more of a walkway down here. Uh, and, and then this carries on. This will be the edge of the orangery. So counting back a few blocks, we need to start up here. We need to count out one, two, three, four. I'm just going to use this to measure five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it comes out to there. Now on the ninth block, it will be a polished andesite block. Uh, underneath here, you can place two more polished andesite blocks, and we're going to use the same motif as we have over there so we're counting across 11 here at the front so we've got one two three four three in the middle and then we carry on with this one two and that should leave us probably one off of there let's just make sure this is exactly 11 across perfect stuff i do like it when a plan comes together so down the middle here we're going to build a wall um, like I said, next door here won't have that in. We've chosen this side. You're the lucky recipient of a conservatory. So this carries on like this, and this is just the dividing wall. We'll sort this little patch of the garden out in a bit. So we've now got ourselves a little rafter in, a little raft foundation in for this um, conservatory. So it's time now to get the actual building part going. So what you want to use for this is normal andesite. And this sits around here as a sort of base on which the building is built on. Now, orangeries are precursors to conservatories, and you will still see them all over the place on modern houses as well, because they're still fairly popular. Okay, so it's time to put the corners in. We're going to be using quartz pillars, so we're going to count up four blocks. One, two, three, four. At the fourth block, place an upside down, two, two upside down quartz stairs, and then one, two, three for the windows like that. So you've got a nice floor to ceiling window here. Uh, on each of these, you're going to need to be placing in another pillar like that. But until they invent quartz walls in the games, we only got pillars to go from. This window in the center is three blocks wide and three blocks high. And above that, again, place the upside down smooth quartz stairs. And then it's the same over this side, one, two, three, four. And get that all in like so. And you've got your garden facing section there in. So it's now time to turn our attention around to this side. So what happens here is we use the same pillar, so then we count across two, count across two again, and you've got yourself a little space here. So you can always put a little door in here, or we can just fill it up with the same glass, because you can access it from the inside. So we don't have to worry about making this any different because, you know, it kind of just suits what it is. That's the stairway there, so we probably want to put the door in here so we can knock out this window and that should connect in to where the edge of the building is going to go so let's count across this way again so one two for the window another two and then we've got the window in there so this can then get filled in with brick um, and you end up with a one wide doorway and that can be your doorway out onto the orangery so this is just obviously changing a little bit the interior we did last time so there we go, you've got your two block high. You can probably leave it at three blocks, get yourself a window above there. So you've got yourself a nice little entrance to there. 
I'm going to be using a birch door for this because I feel that it feels a bit more like a fancy door to go out into an orangery. This bit here will be brick going up like that uh, because you don't really want to be looking into your onto your neighbour's patio. So that carries on across like that. Although this section here will be glass, so you can sort of see. Uh, I don't think that's too much of an issue, really. Peaky, peaky neighbours are always um, always going to be a thing. Always have been. That's why we build lots of uh, bushes everywhere, so no one can see through. And also, just keep your blinds closed. So what we're doing here is carrying on the same motif as we've got at the front. And you've got yourself a nice little room now where you can sit and take the sun in, take the heat in, and look out across your garden. Obviously it's not done yet, we're going to put the roof on, and the roof has a little lantern on top, rather than it being a fully glass roof. Trying to execute a roof uh, out of glass at this size and this scale is really, really hard, so I tend to not do it. Uh, I just put a normal lead roof on, just to make it look a bit more interesting. But that's what we got for the base level. So the next section to do is to go around the top here. Uh, you can use whatever block you've got in your hand, so we can put some more quartz pillars here, but it doesn't really matter, because this block's going to get hidden behind the cornice that sits on here. Okay, so around the building now, we will be placing in the cornice of quartz stairs. These are going to sit here upside down, like so. We've got our little brick wall here, which builds into the building, and then we carry on around the corner like this. And above this, we will be placing some grey carpet, just to give it a bit of a lead-lined look to it. And then we can start with the little roof on this section. Uh, you may be thinking, what are we going to do for the inside? Um, what we're going to do for the inside is rinse and repeat this little pattern across. I like this little pattern, and I think it works well in an outdoor setting, such as a conservatory or orangery. You would tend to have a tiled floor out here rather than a wooden floor, uh, as it would make more sense to stand on tiles rather than wood when it's warm or cold or whatnot. Um, I know in real life they are tiled floors as well, so that always helps. But the pattern itself is just a little checkered board of polished granite and also a brick which I think works nicely it gives this nice little pink color to it so let's fill that in with brick now excellent so that's what we got going on there I know it sort of matches the back of the building a little bit but I don't think it looks too bad you know you come in here and you look down the garden you've got your place to sit here you've got some nice little sun coming in it's going to look a-okay so now it's time to get the roof in so let's start that Okay, so it's time now to put the roof down so like I mentioned before we're going to get some gray carpet out sorry light gray carpet out and that goes around the top of the cornice. Now I've chosen to do this because I didn't want to make the roof too steep because we've got windows above it. Those window sills may have to go into, you know, disappear like this because the roof will get in the way. Um, we can put some upside down quartz stairs in the walls instead to offset that so it still looks quite nice. And we've got the solid quartz above which again looks nice. So that's fine with that. Uh, with the roof itself is going to follow the same motif as we've got around the front where we have the corner pieces made out of polished andesite slabs and that works its way up like that same again this side and as I mentioned we're going to put a lantern in the top so the lantern is just a way of adding a bit more light into the building itself uh, and that will sit in the center of this so let's carry this on one more block up each side right okay so once you're up four blocks here like we have for these slabs it's time to put another four up in these corners so let's carry this on up by one. Slabs are so hard to place, I don't like them using them that much, uh, especially without a plug-in on my server, but hey-ho. So what you're left with is this little area in the middle. So this is going to be where the lantern goes. So we're left with one block this side, and then you've also got four blocks in the middle here, sorry, three blocks in the center there. And that allows us to place a building, well, I wouldn't say building, a structure up here which we can use as a way of getting some light down size. So let me just carry this little roof up, get all of the slabs in. So what we're doing for actual roof tiles is just using some uh, andesite slabs. So I'm going to get this in quickly, and then we can start on that little lantern. Okay, so what you're going to need to build this lantern is some diorite uh, walls. We're going to place those in each of the corners so you end up with a nice little square in there. This gets filled in with some andesite so you're not left with too much of a hole. Um, and then on top of that, you place in some white stained glass that we're using for the rest of the building. And then in the top corners, we're going to go for some more of this andesite slabs. And then you just build up the internal bits in here with, with the normal andesite slabs. 
until you get to the center where it will be another selection of polished andesite slabs and hey presto you got yourself a little lantern on top so that is the orangery done and i gotta say it really does bring a bit more to this building um obviously it's a bit of a flat face building but without that on the back it would look a bit plain uh ultimately on this other side you could put a bay window in uh, i know in my original building i have a bay window on this side as well so the final part to get on with is decorating the back garden now i'm not going to show you you know exactly how to do it we may jump into a time lapse halfway through but my ideas are this so you would stagger how the garden is set out so we've got this front bit which is going to be the sort of the section of the garden you can see from the house so a bit more formal this will probably be where you take your breakfasts if you're that sort of person so i'm going to carry this hedge line down a little bit this is where it all gets a little bit arbitrary as in it's all based on what constraints you have so what i'm going to do is give myself the constraints of this here is going to be like the edge of the wall so we're going to have a little bit of a the wall will go back to about here uh, and then in my one on my test world in Wolhampton, I built myself a coach house at the back here, like we did over on that one. And that just helps bring a bit more realism to it. For this tutorial, we're already running out of time, so we don't want to keep adding bits that we don't need. So what I, what I was suggesting of doing is you just arbitrarily place a sort of selection of hedges across your garden. So it helps break it up. So what I'm doing here is putting a bit of a bend on that one. Now what this does is it separates your garden into a bit more of a formal one and then you can hide some stuff away in here and then if you even selection, if you sort of cut that off again what you can do is you can place yourself a nice little vegetable patch here some raised beds or whatnot, and that's away from the house so you aren't really seeing it but in, in the Victorian period and the Georgian period you would definitely be growing your own vegetables because it's cheaper and also it's easy uh, I don't know why we took a sort of turn away from it, but obviously these days people are growing their own again, which is amazing stuff. But yeah, so you've got this little uh, sort of secluded area, put a fountain in there, a little couple of benches and some trees. So that is kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump into a time lapse quickly, get this garden set up, and we can take a little wander around and wrap up this build. So let me jump into that. Alright, okay, so this is how the garden looks in my sort of very, not rushed, but quick uh, understanding of it. So like I mentioned, we've got a little vegetable patch down here at the back, so it's like a sort of little garden uh, for people to grow stuff in. Over here, I've put in just a little fence gate, so you can get through from what would be, you know, maybe the back of the back alley at the house, or even like an area for stables and that. And then we've got this little secluded area in the centre with a nice fountain in, you can come and stand and walk around and do whatever you need to do. Uh, but what I have done here is connected this into this dirt path, uh, made a path out of uh, polished andesite and stone. That sort of goes around. I've used World Edit cylinder tools to be able to paint that on as a little brush type. And I've just put a big tree in here, made it a little bit taller and put some foliage around the base. But honestly, I think that is all you really need to do for a house like this. Because you would probably copy it onto the other side. And once you start putting a few rows of these in, it really does start to bring it to life. So should we take a quick look at this place in shaders and then call it a day? Okay, so here we are back around the front of the building. And if you're just wandering up the street, you see a house like this. Oh, come on. Honestly, it would be one of those sort of really grand places you would just love to see. So you've got these two big gates at the front here. This opens up onto a driveway. So you come in here past all this nice foliage, get dropped off at your respective house, uh, wander on up the staircase to even go you know, up into the house see what's going on here obviously these doors need to be flipped around or you go on into this house over here and up round into the garden so what we got up round here then so the garden itself again i said wasn't amazing but we've got a nice little detail in there and some ideas and we've got the orangery as well so imagine sitting in here and just looking out there across onto the garden you've got your nice big brick wall at the back you've got a little fountain in here as well and then some vegetables growing in the base so guys this has been my large victorian villa um, and I've really enjoyed building it and I hope you guys have enjoyed building it as well So let me know in the comments below of any other buildings you'd like to see me do as tutorials Because I'm always happy to do more of these in the future, but without further ado. Thank you guys for watching 
and I'll see you next time.